I'm Patrick Watson, I'm an astrologer, and you're watching Big Fat Astro Vlog. And this is my fancy new pop filter, so it filters out my peas which are too percussive because I'm Patrick Watson. <laughs> Raise your hand if you were born on a cusp. Cuspy babies represent. I'm like on the Scorpio and Sagittarius cusp, so I'm like special. I'm like a Scorpitarius. How do I put this gently? Uh, no, you're not. You can't have more than one sun sign, and you, your sun sign can't be a blend of two sun signs. Scorpitarius was not, is not, and never will be a thing. Stop trying to make it a thing! For that matter, you're not a Piquarius, a Scorbra, a Sadricorn, a Geminorus, Geminorus Rex. You're not any of these things because for all practical purposes, they don't exist. Here's why. When someone says, I'm an Aries. What they mean is that the sun was in the tropical sign of Aries at the time they exited their mother's vagina. Because the tropical zodiac is based on the equinoxes and solstices, we know exactly down to the minute and second what sign the sun is actually in at any given moment. There are 30 degrees in each sign, and it's only once the sun moves past 29 degrees, 59 minutes and 59 seconds of that sign that it is finally in another sign. You're one or the other. There's no cuspy gray area where you're kind of both. And hey, there's gray area in a lot of things in life. The things that happened at that one night at that bachelor party that got weird. The appropriate amount of time to wait before rebooting a movie that bombed. Whether a vegan spits or swallows. But the question of what sign the sun was in when you were born is not fucking one of them. It's a sun sign, not a cat that can't decide whether it's in or out. Seriously, Fluffy, you need to fucking decide. In or out. Oh, fucking come on, Fluffy. Fuck you, Fluffy. If you're not sure now what your sun sign is, here's how to find out the sign the sun was actually in at the time of your birth. Step one, acquire the time of your birth. This could be a whole other video, but basically, if you don't already know your birth time, you can try any of these methods for figuring it out. Ask your parents. They may know the exact time and you're done. Or they may have recorded it in a baby book. Or they may have other helpful details which help you narrow down the time. Parents finally come in handy, right? Look up your birth certificate. Make sure to cross-reference what the birth certificate says with the memories of your parents. Sometimes your parents' memories can be off. Sometimes the record can be off. If you're really young, you may even be able to look back at your parents' social media postings to see if they included it in the official announcement, or at least whittle down the possibilities based on the timestamp of the first baby photos or status updates or something. You can look up your birth announcement in newspaper archives, uh, like a goddamn old person. Sometimes you'll be there, most of the time not. See if you can get a hold of your medical records from the hospital you were born at, and uh, good luck with that. If you can't get your birth time from any of these methods, you may need an astrologer to help reverse engineer your birth time through a process known as rectification. Step two, once you know your birth time, make an account at www.astro.com. It's free, don't worry. You plug in all your information, your birth date, birthplace, birth time, and you check your chart. Look for the sun symbol, which looks like a floating boob, and you'll see what sign it's actually in. This is my chart that I'm using as an example. You can clearly see that despite being born on October 23rd, 1987, 106am in High Wycombe, Buckinghamshire, UK, my sun is at 29 Libra, and thus my sun sign is Libra, not Scorpio. It's not on a cusp, it's in Libra. But I feel like I'm born on the cusp. Well, the sign your sun is in is just one part of your chart. If you were born with the sun in Pisces and moon in Aries, then you may have some claim to feeling like you have some Aries qualities. Or more commonly with the sun in Pisces, you may be likely to have Mercury or Venus in Aries and feel that. I'm not trying to invalidate your lived experience, but I'm also just saying that when it comes to the sun and the moon and the other planets, uh, the so-called cusps are not too fuzzy. The problem you're more likely to run into is knowing exactly what rising sign you have. The Earth rotates about one degree every four minutes, which means the eastern horizon, or your rising sign, uh, can be close to a sign boundary. And if it is, it's going to be very important to have a precise birth time. In some cases, minutes or even seconds can make a difference in how you'd interpret a chart, but that's a video for another time. Another reason why the idea of cusps doesn't make any sense is that astrologers for hundreds of years have told everyone that ingresses are super important. Ingresses are when a planet enters a sign. For example, astrologers to this day cast charts for the exact moment the sun enters Aries in Washington DC, 
to get an annual forecast for the country's political happenings. It's called an Aries Ingress chart, not a Pisces Cuspy thingy chart. You might be going, okay, Patrick, no need to be a dick to people who are just beginning to learn astrology and might have picked this cusp stuff up without knowing any better, but it's actually not astrology beginners who are triggering me here. Tarot.com is, ironically, one of the most highly trafficked astrology websites on the internet, and you'd think they'd know better. But no, uh, here is their super legit officially fish infographic on cusps. Note that the cusp between Capricorn and Aquarius is called the cusp of mystery and imagination. <laughs> mystery and imagination? Between the two signs ruled by Saturn, the greater malefic Saturn, which has domain over grief and darkness, is the cusp of goddamn mystery and imagination. Reading the in-depth explanation of these cusps will bring you to the cusp of insanity. So now you know that cusps aren't really a thing, you can learn more about your chart. If you're a beginner watching this video, keep playing around with your natal chart on astro.com. Learn about the planets and signs, houses, aspects, etc. and you'll be well on your way on a journey of self-discovery and rolling your eyes condescendingly when someone says they were born on a cusp, and then you can cusp them out. Ugh, fuck you, Fluffy. Seriously, you're such a dang Geminorus Rex, I swear. You're fucking... Just in or out. Come on, man. Come on. Fuck you, Fluffy. Thanks for watching. If you like this episode, please give it a like. Please share it on your social media. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate that. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I'm going to be releasing new videos every week on Friday. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>